In this video, I am going to explain LPP using simplex method. See, there are many algorithmic methods to solve LPP. Here I am going to explain LPP by using simplex method. See the problem. Solve the following LPP using the simplex method. Here this is a maximization problem. So maximize z is equal to 12x1 plus 16x2 subject to 10x1 plus 20x2 lesser than or equal to 120. Second constraint 8x1 plus 8x2 lesser than or equal to 80. x1 and x2 greater than or equal to 0. So this problem is a maximization problem. Maximization z is equal to 12x1 plus 16x2. This is the objective function. Subject to two constraints are given. See, while you write the two constraints, you need to add slack variable along with this. In the first equation add S1 is equal to 120. In the second constraint add second slack variable that is S2. For each constraint you need to add one slack variable in order to balance the constraint. Okay, so here we have added two slack variables. No, we need to add these two constraints in the objective function. That is 0 as 1. For the first slack 1, the value is 0. In the same way, slack 2 also the value is 0. This one is first constraint and this one is second constraint. So, x1, comma, x2, comma, s1 and s2 greater than or equal to 0. Let us see how I am going to frame the initial feasible table. See, this is the format of initial simplex table. See here, cbi is a cj basic variables solution this column for ratio cj refers to coefficient of the objective function so coefficient of objective function is for x1 12 for x2 16 for s1 0 for s2 0 so these are the coefficient of objective function so you need to write these values in this column cj is 12 x1 16 x2 0 s1 0 s2 so we have four basic variables now x1 x2 s1 and s2 again see the objective function 12 x1 cj is coefficient is 12 basic variable is x1 second one 16 x2 16 is coefficient x2 is basic variable cj 16 basic variable x2 then 0 cj is 0 basic variable is s1 0 s1 and the last one is uh, 0 is cj and s2 is basic variable 0 and s2 so these are all cj's and basic variables so here in this objective function we have two basic variables we have added two basic variables no what is the value of basic variable zero and zero here you need to write the values that is coefficient of basic variable so we have introduced two slack variable no so here you need to write s1 and s2 so these are the two slack variable which is called as basic variable Look at the first constraint 10x1 plus 20x2 plus only one slack variable introduced in the first constraint. So 1s1, no s2. So for that you can put 0 is equal to 120. 10x1, 20x2, only one s1 is there in the first constraint. So no s2 in the first constraint is equal to what is the value? Solution is 120. Now look at the second constraint 8x1 plus 8x2 plus s2 here no s1 here we have introduced s2 so s2 value is 1 s1 value is 0 is equal to 80 for second one 8x1 8x2 s1 value 0 s2 value is 1 8x1 plus 8x2 plus s2 so here we have only s2 no s1 no so for s1 you can put 0 we have s2 so put 1 solution 80 let me explain the initial simplex table here cj basic variables are there no just look at the objective function 
maximization z is equal to 12x1, 16x2, 0s1, 0s2. No, 12, 16, 0, 0 is our objective functions coefficient. See, CJ refers to coefficient of objective function 12, 16, 0 and 0. Here, x1, x2, s1 and s2 are basic variables. x1, x2, s1, s2. Okay. So, here in basic variables, here we have introduced two slack variables. No, s1 and s2. For the first equation, s1 is a slack variable. For the second constraint, s2 is a slack variable. So, look at the first constraint. 10x1, 20x2. No. 10, 20. Here we have only one slack variable that is S1. So 1. No S2. So 0. And 120 is a solution. Look at the second constraint. 8x1 plus 8x2 and S2. Okay. 8x1, 8x2, no S1. So 0. Here we have S2. So 1. Solution is 80. Here we have two slack variables, no S1 and S2. The cost of slack variable is 0, 0. Look at the objective function. 0 and 0. So this is the way to prepare the initial simplex table. Now we need to find Zj values. Look at this formula. This is the formula to find the values for Zj. But I am going to use a simple way to find out Zj. See the first value. Cbi into x1. That is 0 into 10 plus 0 into 8. Let me explain. First value is 0 into 10 plus 0 into 8. So what is the value? 0 into 10, 0 plus 0 into 8, 0. So what is the answer? 0. In the same way, look at the second value. 0 into 20 plus 0 into 8. 0 into 20 plus 0 into 8. 0 into 20 is 0 plus 0 into 8 is 0. Answer is 0. In the same way, look at the third value. 0 into 1 plus 0 into 0. 0 into 1, 0. Plus 0 into 0, 0. So, 0 plus 0, 0. In the same way, for the last value, 0 into 0, 0. Plus 0 into 1, 0. Value is 0. Okay. In the same way for the solution also. 0 into 120, 0. Plus 0 into 80, 0. Since... Our CBI value is 0, so all the ZJ values will be 0 only in the initial simplex table. After finding ZJ, now you need to compare CJ and ZJ. The formula is CJ minus ZJ. So CJs are coefficient of objective function. Look at the top. CJ is 12, 16, 0 and 0. ZJ values are 0, 0, 0, 0. Just compare two values that is CJ minus ZJ. CJ is 12, ZJ is 0. So 12 minus 0, 12. In the same way for the second value, CJ value is 16, ZJ value is 0. 16 minus 0, 16. 0 minus 0, 0. 0 minus 0, 0. Okay, so we have 4 CJ values and 4 ZJ values and we have got these values. After finding CJ minus ZJ values, look at the optimality condition. For maximization problem, all CJ minus ZJ values should be less than or equal to 0, which means 0 or negative values. For minimization problem, all CJ minus ZJ values should be greater than or equal to 0, which means 0 or positive values. So, this is the optimality condition. So, here this problem is the maximization problem. No. So, our value that is ZJ minus ZJ values should be less than or equal to 0, which means 0 or negative values. But here we have got positive values. The first value is 12, second value is 16, third value is 0, fourth value is 0. See, this is the maximization problem. No. Optimality condition is the final value that is CJ, ZJ value should be 0 and less than 0, which means we need to get the negative value. Here we have got positive values. No. So, we did not reach the optimality. So, we need to proceed further step to reach the optimality. In order to proceed further, first step is select the maximum maximum value in the cj minus zj see 16 is the maximum value okay so this column is called 
key column after finding the key column the next step is you need to find a ratio that is the ratio between solution column and key column for the first row solution is 120 no so 120 divided by 20 you will be getting ratio 120 divided by 26 in the same way for second row 80 divided by 8 is equal to 10 in order to find the key row, select the least value in the ratio column. Here, 6 is the least value. That is minimum value. So, this row, select this row. This row is called key row. This intersection point is called key element. This column is called key column. This row is called key row. Here, x2 is a entering variable. S1 is a leaving variable. Now, let us see how I am going to frame the first iteration. In the first iteration, first you need to write CJ values and basic variables. So, there will be no changes in CJ values and basic variables. Just copy from the initial simplex table. CJ is 12, 16, 0, 0. 12, 16, 0 and 0. Basic variables are X1, X2, S1, S2. In the previous table, we have found that S1 is a leaving variable and X2 is the entering variable. Here, instead of S1, you need to write X2. X2. X2 value is 16. In order to find the new value, just divide the key element with all other old values. Let me show the calculation. See, the first value is 10. No. 10 divided by key element. Key element is 20. So, 10 divided by 20 is equal to 1 by 2. Second value 20. Old value is 20. Key element also 20. No. So, 20 divided by 20, 1. For this value, old value is 1. Now, you need to find the new value. 1 divided by 20. For this value, Old value is 0. 0 divided by 20, 0. Next one, 120 is old value now. For new value, 120 divided by 20, 6. We have got the values for first row. Now you need to find the value for second row. That is S2. First write the basic variable that is S2. Write as it is. What is the value? Cost 0. Write 0 here. For all other elements, in order to find the new value, you need to apply a simple formula. So, there is a formula to find out the new value. This is the formula to find the new value. That is, old value minus corresponding key column value into corresponding key row value divided by key element. So, let me explain. Look at the first value. Old value is 8. Okay, write 8 here. Old value is 8. Minus corresponding key column value and key row value divided by key element. See, here the old value is 8. No, so corresponding column value is 8. This is the key column. This one is key row. Okay, here the corresponding key column value is 8. Corresponding key row value is 10 divided by key element is 20. Old value 8 minus corresponding key column value also 8 into corresponding key row value is 10 divided by key element is 20. 8 into 10, 80. 8 minus 80 divided by 20. So, 8 minus 4 is equal to 4. Write 4 here. In the same way, find the value for all other values also. The next one is 8. Old value is 8. Old value 8 minus corresponding key column value. Key column is this. So, key column is same thing only. 8. 8 into corresponding row value. Corresponding row value is 20. Okay. 20 divided by so, the key element is common for all the values. So, old value is 8 minus 8 into 20, 160 divided by 20. So, 8 minus 8 is equal to 0. New value is 0. 0. In the same way, for the next value, old value is 0. Corresponding column value 8. 
into corresponding row value 1 divided by corresponding key element 20. And row value divided by 20. So 0 minus 8 divided by 20. So 0 minus 2 by 5. So minus 2 by 5. Minus 2 by 5. In the same way for the next value. Old value 1 minus corresponding column value 8 into corresponding row value 0 divided by corresponding key element 20. Old value 1 minus corresponding column value 8 into corresponding row value 0 divided by corresponding key element 20. So 1 minus 8 into 0, 0. So 0 minus 20, 0 only. So 1. So 1. In the same way for the next value, old value is 80, no. So, 80 minus corresponding column value 8 into corresponding row value 120 divided by corresponding key element 20. Old value 80 minus corresponding column value 8 into corresponding row value 120 divided by key element 20. So, 80 minus 8 into 20, 960 divided by 20. So, 80 minus 960 divided by 20, 48. Final answer is 32. 32 is the new value. So, now we have got the new value for first row as well as second row. For the first row, we have divided the key element with the all value. For the second row, we have applied the formula in order to find the new value for second row. Now, you need to find Zj. Okay, the formula for Zj is multiply CBI value into x value each element plus second row value 0 into 4. That is 16 into 1 by 2 plus 0 into 4. What is the value? 8. For the second value, 16 into 1 plus 0 into 0. 16. For the third value, 16 into 1 by 20 plus 0 into minus 2 by 5. Answer is 4 by 5. For the next value, 16 into 0 plus 0 into 1, 0. So, after finding Zj, then you need to compare Cj value with Zj value. That is Cj minus Zj. That is 12 minus 8. 4, 16 minus 16, 0, 0 minus 4 by 5, minus 4 by 5, 0 minus 0, 0. So, what is the optimality condition? Cj minus Zj must be 0 and less than 0, which means 0 or negative value. Here we have got 4, 0, minus 4 by 5 and 0. Here we have one positive value. So, we have to proceed further. In order to proceed further, select the maximum positive value here. 4 is the maximum positive value. So, select this column. This column is a key column. Okay, after finding the key column, then you need to find the ratio. You need to find the ratio with solution value and key column value that is 6 divided by 1 by 2 and 32 divided by 4. For the first row, 6 divided by 1 by 2. What is the answer? 12. In the same way, for the second row, the solution is 32. No, 32 divided by key column value is 4. 4. What is the answer? 8. Okay. So, now we have got two ratios. Now, we need to select the key row. So, in order to select the key row, we need to find the least value. That is minimum value. So, which one is least value? 8 is the least value. No. Select this row. This row is called key row. This column is called key column. See, the row variable is S2. No. The row variable will be leaving variable. The column variable will be entering variable. So, X1 is an entering variable. S2 is a leaving variable. The intersect point is called key element. Here, 4 is the key element. So, with this, you need to proceed further. So, now you need to find the second iteration. In the second iteration, write the basic variables and CJ values. So, there will be no changes in this. You can write the same thing which is there in the first iteration. 
CJ value is 12, 16, 0 and 0. 12, 16, 0 and 0. Basic variables are X1, X2, S1 and S2. X1, X2, S1 and S2. Okay, in the basic variable column, there are two variables are there now here. S2 is a leaving variable. X1 is a entering variable. In the second iteration, write the same thing as it is. X2. X2 cost is 16. 16. Okay. Now, you have to write the second one. That is, S2 is a leaving variable. Entering variable is X1. So, instead of S2, you have to write X1 with the value. Okay. Now, this is the key row no for new value just divide the key element with the old value in order to find the new value in the second iteration for the first value is old value is 4 divided by key element also same thing only 4 so 4 divided by 4 1 1 second value old value 0 0 divided by key element 4 0 divided by 4 0 Next value, minus 2 by 5 divided by 4, minus 1 by 10. Next, 1 divided by 4. Then, 32 divided by 4. Eight. Here, we have got the new value for the second row. And now, you need to find the value for first row. Look at the first iteration. Here, you need to apply the formula. What is the formula for these values? That is, new value is equal to old value minus corresponding key column value into corresponding key row value divided by key element. Let us see. The old value is 1 by 2. The corresponding key column value also same thing only. 1 by 2 into corresponding row value. Row value is 4 divided by corresponding key element. That is key element is common for all the value. That is 4. Old value 1 by 2 minus corresponding column value also 1 by 2 into corresponding row value 4 divided by key element 4. The answer is... 0 0 for the second one old value 1 minus corresponding column value 1 by 2 into corresponding row value 0 divided by key element 4 old value 1 minus corresponding column value 1 by 2 into corresponding row value 0 divided by key element 4 the answer is 1 for the next value Old value is 1 by 20 minus corresponding column value 1 by 2 into corresponding row value minus 2 by 5 divided by key element 4. Old value 1 by 20 minus corresponding column value 1 by 2 into corresponding row value minus 2 by 5 divided by key element 4. The answer is 1 by 10. For the next value, old value 0 minus corresponding column value 1 by 2 into corresponding key row value 1 divided by key element 4. Old value 0 minus corresponding column value 1 by 2 into corresponding row value 1 divided by key element 4. Answer is minus 1 by 8. For the next value, old value 6 minus corresponding key column value 1 by 2 into corresponding row value 32 divided by key element 4. Old value 6 minus corresponding column value 1 by 2 into corresponding row value 32 divided by key element 4. The answer is 2. After finding the new values for two rows, now you need to find Zj. To find out Zj, take a cost into each element. That is 16 into 0 plus 12 into 1. What is the value? 16 into 0, 0 plus 12 into 1, 12. Then 16 into 1, 16 plus 12 into 0, 0. Answer 16. Next one, 16 into 1 by 10 plus 12 into minus 1 by 10, 2 by 5. 
in the same way next one is 16 into minus 1 by 8 plus 12 into 1 by 4 the answer is 1 next one 16 into 2 plus 12 into 8 answer is 128 okay now we have got the values for zj after this you need to find the difference between cj and zj that is cj minus zj for the first column cj value is 12 zj value also 12 so 12 minus 12 0 next 16 minus 16 again 0 then 0 minus 2 by 5 minus 2 by 5 then 0 minus 1 minus 1 we have got cj minus zj values now check the optimality so for the maximization problem what is the condition for optimality all the cj minus zj value should be zero or less than zero which means zero or negative value then only the optimality will be reached so according to this problem in the second iteration we have got all the values of less than 0 that is the first, first two values are 0 the next two values are negative values so optimality is reached see x1 value is 12 x2 value is 16 z value that is optimum value is 128 see x1 value is 12 x2 value is 16 the optimum solution is Z optimum solution is 128. So, optimality is reached.